not, uh, I'm glad we had extra singing. The atmosphere got good in here because I'm, uh, I'm not going to, it, it ain't going to be no, what you'd say, a great sermon, I don't reckon. And it may be pretty short, but it's what the Lord laid on my heart. And I'm going to talk about uh, the bus ministry. I haven't preached about the bus ministry in a long time. And since we're starting our spring program uh, uh, here in a few, well, next week, I'm going to be talking about the bus ministry. And it just so happens that we have one of our bus kids here tonight and that has something that she wants to say. And uh, she's going to come up here and say it. And you pray for her. She comes uh, from Lenore on uh, Mr. T, Miss Tammy's route. And she wants to say something that she's learned while she's been here. So come on up here, sister. Hey, man. I'm going to be introducing her. What's your name? Phyllis. Phyllis? <laughs> I'm surprised. Hey, man. Give me just a little more on this one, Brother Roy. And she's going to tell you what she is learning. Isn't that? Don't she look pretty? Standing up here all dressed up. Look like one of them saddlers. And, <laughs> and uh, she's going to say something that what she's learned. Uh, for the glory of God. See, sometimes the devil will just make you see those mean bus kids that won't come in and won't behave and, and misbehave. And you think, that's all they are. That's not all they are. That's a small fraction of them. There's a bunch of little kids that are getting something from the Lord every Sunday here at our church. So you pray for it now. She says, hold it real close up to your mouth there. There you go. Real close. Real close. Like ice cream. Do it just like ice cream. See, you don't need ice cream down there. There you go. John 3.16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, man. Wasn't that good? Hey, man. Hey, man. What a blessing. Hey, man. And we have bus kids that are learning... Uh, Buy all the books of the Bible. We have bus kids that are learning uh, um, how, to, how, to, how to do, how to sing. They've been going around singing these songs. You have to remember that uh, we're living in a different day. We're living in a different day. We're living in a heathenistic society, godless society. A po Somebody said this was a post-Christian era that we're living in now. That's about the truth. About the truth. Used to, when you went and you said Bible, everybody knew what you are talking about. When you said church, People know you're talking about Baptist, but not no more. Not no more. I'm telling you, brother, it's, it's bad. It's bad nowadays. So thank God for our bus ministry. Let's think about it tonight. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter number 9. Now I want to preach a sermon on the world's first bus kid. 2 Samuel chapter 9, the world's first bus kid. Good, brother Danny. <laughs> You say, they didn't have no bus in second Samuel. <laughs> they had chariots. And that's what them things are out there, them big gold chariots with shining light rode on them. They ride them golden chariots to work to church every Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Okay? All right, Second Samuel chapter 9. Now, so King Saul had died, David's enemy. And when he died, uh, David loved him. He's always good to him. And he wanted to do something special for his house because David and Jonathan were such good friends. They loved each other. So uh, we have all kinds of bus kids that come here to our church, and this little fellow reminds me of one. Let me show you another bus kid. Stand up our big Ray. Look at that bus kid back there. There's a bus kid. <laughs> He's a bouncer, really, is what he is. He's got that, uh, he's got that, what's that dude who plays piano? That blind guy? Ray yeah. Ray Charles look on the night. Amen. <laughs> and that's where you bus workers ought to be. You ought to be so persuasive that uh, you ought to be able to get Ray Charles a driver's license, brother, uh, when you go out. That's what somebody said. Look at chapter 9, verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left to the house of Saul, Saul was his enemy, remember, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Yeah. Isn't that something? David said, I wish I could find out there's somebody I could be good to. I'd like to find somebody that I could just show him a little kindness. Is there anybody, anybody that I could do something nice for? 
What about that? That's his attitude. Now look, verse 2. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And, they, and he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? That's grace. That's a picture of God's grace. The kindness of God. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son. It's me and you. This is our bus kids. Which is lame on his feet. Right. He can't come by himself. He can't walk. His little fellow laying out there crippled like that. And he's laying over yonder in this other town. And look at verse 4. And the king said, where is he? Where is this little fellow we're going to go get? And Ziba said to the king, behold, he is in the house of Major, the son of Amiel, in Lenore. <laughs> My soul. I didn't know that was in the Bible. The boy lived in Lenore. Little crippled feller lived in Lenore. That's not exactly right. It's Lodibar. Now, the word Lodibar in the Bible means uh, want, uh, uh, as a want, like uh, need of bread, uh, uh, Iraq, something like that. You know, where there's not much, much, much stuff to eat. And uh, verse 5, then King David sent and fetched him. See? Now, uh, anybody Yankees here tonight? You need to understand, don't make fun of us hillbillies for saying fetch. The Holy Spirit used that word. It's not hillbilly, it's Bible. Fetch, fetch him. So if somebody say, go store and fetch me a Pepsi, they're not a hick, a hick redneck. They're led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Amen. And uh, he fetched him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel from Lenore. Verse 6. Now when Mephibosheth, that was the little feller's name, little bus kid, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. That little boy got saved. David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness, that's God's grace, for Jonathan thy father's sake and will restore thee all the land of, the, of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Right. My soul, that's junior church, Miss Linda. That's junior church. That's program on the bus, bus workers. Eat bread at the king's table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring him the fruits, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, that my master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, He shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Let's just tell this little story just for a second, and uh, then I'm going to give you uh, four or five little thoughts, and then, then we'll maybe have a bus meeting or something and we'll go. So it's going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. In this story tonight, we see the bedrock fundamental truth that we derive from things like the bus ministry. The bus ministry has a lot of critics. There are those that say, well, I don't believe in bribing people to come to church. Uh, I don't believe in giving uh, people anything. But they don't know their Bible too good. For Jesus said this. You know what he told his disciples one time? He said, if you give somebody a cup of cold water, in the name of the disciple, in my name, you will not lose your reward. Jesus was offering them a reward. 
You can say whatever you want to. That's what the Bible said. Amen? Yes. He said, if you don't, if you break, do something, you give somebody a cup of cold water, then I will reward you. So there's nothing wrong with any, any legitimate means of doing something nice for somebody in kindness. Now, so uh, the, the, like I said, the bus ministry has a lot of critics, but the greatest arm of the church in America, in America, it's not like this all on the mission field, but in America is the bus ministry. Thank God that we're a church here at Shining Light Baptist Church that says, you know, we got the shout, we got the right book, we got the, the atmosphere, we got the Spirit of God. Let's don't just hog it all for ourselves. Let's go out there and get everybody we possibly can in the sound of the, of the gospel. So this story went like this. One day, King David was sitting on his throne, and David got sitting around, and he thought, you know what? He said, uh, I, I just want to do something good for somebody. I just one of them days. I'm in a good mood, and I just want to do something good. Servant, come here. This servant come up. He's the bus worker. And King, King David said, uh, why don't you, uh, you want to do something good for somebody? He said, that sounds good to me, King. He said, I enjoy doing something good for somebody. He said, I'll tell you what. You check the records and you find out if there's anybody left of, King, of uh, Saul's family. And I'm going to just do something special and nice for him. And uh, he said, I'll do it. And they said, he found out he's got a little boy way down yonder in, Lo in Lenore. And uh, it's a long way from here. And all the art lives over there is rednecks and, 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 and bootleggers. And, uh, I'm just kidding. I, I, low de bar. Oh, low de bar. Amen. Low down de bar. And uh, all them low down people uh, lived in low down de bar. And boy, you know what? Uh, he, he told me, he said, go get it. Now, I can imagine this. The servant said, guess what? He said, I'm, I'm on a mission for the king. Did you know, bus workers, every one of you that's in the bus ministry tonight, there was a time when the king spoke to your heart. And the king said, I want to do something good for somebody. And he called you. And he called me. And he said, just go down there to Lodi Bar and get them little boys and bring them so I can do something good for them. And so the king said, do that. Well, here he come. And, and the, uh, the church it gets all fixed up. The king's chariot. And I can imagine. It was a big old long golden looking thing. And boy, they'd washed it up. And it had the king's horses that were pulling. It looked like them big Clydesdales. And they were out there pulling that thing. And he got in there and he said, I'm headed down to Lodi Bar. Uh, and some of his buddies said, don't you want to go fishing? We're going fishing. No, sir. I'm going down to Lodi Bar this morning. Go down there and find that little fella that the king wants to do something something good for it. And they said, but uh, don't your grass need mowing? He said, yeah, but I'll get it out a while. Uh, I'm going down to Loaded Bar uh, to get that little boy that the king wants to do something good for. And he said, well, well, uh, uh, ain't you busy? He said, yeah, I am busy. Won't your wife fuss at you? Don't she want you to take your, you around all them yard sales and sit in the car while she goes out there and waste half a day? And he said, yeah, she does. But the king needs me to go down there and tell that little boy that he wants to do something good for it. And boy, I'm telling you what, that'll preach, people. That'll pre preach, amen. Listen, we all got something different we can do on Saturday, but thank God we're in business for the king. We're in business for the king. But we are ambassadors uh, that the king has sent to get little boys and girls that the king wants to do something good for. Like little Phyllis sitting over here. Look at her. She looks like a little angel. Amen. Uh, you have to imagine a little bit. Uh, but I want to tell you what, boy, uh, the king wanted to do something good for her. The king wanted to do something good for all them that was here this morning. The king wanted to do something good for them. And so he says, go get them. So here they go. Which way is Lodi Bar? Boy, it's expensive, ain't it? Don't this cost a lot of money? Sure does. You ought to feed them horses. Don't get very many miles to a bell of hay, do they? No, sir. They ain't a lot of it. But you go on down there and you get that little boy. I don't care what it costs. What's the worth of a soul? That little boy's worth more than all of them. It don't matter how much it costs. Uh, go get him. He's worth it. And I'm going to say tonight, ladies and gentlemen, every single best kid that walks through that door is worth more than this whole wide world for the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. They are worth more than everything. They got a soul in them that's going to spend eternity in heaven or hell. And Shining Light Baptist Church might be the only thing that detours them from hell and sends them toward heaven. Count me in 
on the bus ministry. Tell me I believe in it. Thank God somebody will go get them. You say, Brother Danny, other church churches will criticize you. That ain't nothing new. Amen, Lord, if they just talk about that, I'll be happy. I'm going to tell you what, boy. Listen, they are going to talk. We got some working against us right now. We got some the devil has put in a lot of people's heart just to try to stop us right now. But them little boys and girls are worth it. They are worth it. And so he takes off. He said, which way is Lodibar? Lord, it's a long way over there. You go out here and turn right and then go out there and turn left on 18 uh, uh, north and head that way. And so here he goes. And right into that, did he? He was sitting up in the chair. And uh, and he was uh, he was riding a horse. Well, he's in the chariot, and here they went down through there. And that chariot come down through there. Everybody that saw that thing said, "Whoa." There goes the king's chariot. There goes the king's chariot. Probably had some kind of seal on the side of it. Uh, you know, okay, look like that right there. Here he went. And boy, here he took off down the road. Boy, there he went. Turned that way. Went to see you, sister. Went right to your house. Amen. And he turned down that way. Went this way. Everybody said, there goes the king's chariot. Turned down this way. Turned over this way. Is there another bus kid in here tonight? Oh, ain't got any more bus kids here tonight? Amen. Big red. Went over to his crowd. Big chant went over and got him. <laughs> Amen. Hey, boy, and, and he turned this way and turned that way. Somebody said, there it goes. There goes the king's chariot. There it goes. There goes the king's chariot. There it goes. People were out pointing in the streets. There goes the king's chariot. He pulled in the loaded bar. There ain't nobody down there worked for the government. Nobody down there worked for King David. Nobody there knew what was going on. And boy, everybody was talking. Where's that thing going? Where's that thing? He turned down this one street. Uh, it was in, in the neighborhood of people that were not really well to do. Uh, people maybe had shingles coming off the roof. Uh, people maybe that had uh, 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 some old beat up toys out in the yard. Uh, people uh, were a lot of the time didn't even have a lot of grace out there in the yard. And, and some of them had a porch. Uh, when you put your foot up on the porch, the porch about ready to fall in and, and all that. And, and you know, uh, it's a couple old junk cars, you know, out there. That's where you know you're a redneck, brother. Uh, if you got at least three junk cars in your front yard, amen. Uh, squirrel tails tied on the antenna. You really know uh, that you're a redneck, and boy, they were out there, you know, and boy, here come the king's uh, chariot, and the king's chariot pulled up there, and boy, I tell you, that thing pulled up, and everybody said, why is he going there? Nobody cares about that family. Nobody cares about them people. They're not well known. Nobody knows them. His daddy ain't a big shot. That old crippled boy lives there. Can't even get out and go to school. Can't even get out and go to nothing. That's a little old crippled boy. I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you, it thrills my soul tonight. Uh, to know that Jesus Christ, he cares just as much for them little old boys and girls as he does the biggest big shot in Burke County. I tell you tonight, thank God, brother, he sent him after him. And there he went. And you know, I, 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 I cut up a lot. Y'all know me. I cut up a lot, and I laugh and have a good time. But honest to the Lord, people, my heart's in the bus ministry. It really is, has been for 20-something years. And my heart breaks. You might not think that I care about these kids, but I do. I pray for our bus workers. I pray for all of our bus routes. I prayed for him this morning uh, while I was going to pick up the kids. I come out here every Saturday, if I, by the grace of God, unless I'm traveling uh, home on an airplane or something and can't get here. You know why? Because I believe we're on business for the king. It's the greatest business of the world. The king sent us down to Lodi Bar to get them little boys out and bring them to the king's table. What a blessing. What a blessing. Think about that. Now, I ain't going to get to my outline yet. I'm just telling you the story. Now, I'm just going to give you the outline. Boy, they went down there. Servant went up. Knocked on the door. Somebody said, somebody's at the door. Who is it? Nobody ever comes to our house on Saturday morning. Bill collectors don't work on Saturday. Who is it? And somebody peeked out the door. Little old snotty-nosed young'un looked out there and said, Mama! Look, it's sitting out in that driveway. And boy, there it said, the king's chariot. Amen. The king's chariot. Highest business in the world sent the king's chariot down there. That little, they knocked on the door. And they, somebody went to the door and he said, you got a little boy here named Mephibosheth? And they said, we sure do. And they said, but he's lame on his feet. They brought him out. Put, had him in a wheelchair, man. Brought him out like that. He come rolling out like that. He is lame on both his feet. Do you know how Mephibosheth got lame? 
Bible said he was lame through a fall. Way back yonder in the first part of the book, he fell. He was run out and fell. You know what he's a picture of? He's a picture of a sinner. Right. He's a picture of me and you. Yeah. You know what made me and you lame? A fall. I had great, 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 great grandpa Adam fell in the Garden of Eden. And brother, we all fell right after him. And we need the king to come and get us. I'm glad he come and got me. I don't understand people that can get saved and, and enjoy the blessing of God and are so stingy with it, they don't want everybody to have it. I want everybody to have it. I want everybody to have it. Somebody told me one time, they said, now Danny, they said, Danny, what, have you ever considered this? And I said, what? They said, what you need is to just get you a church. It's honest truth. They said, well, you need to run about 200 and that way you won't be so busy and all that. And I was sitting there shaking my head going, you got to be out of your mind. Are you smoking crack? I mean, a preacher's backslid. A preacher's backslid. They just said, I want to get to a certain point and then I want to stop. Brother, there's people out there dying. They need God. They need God just like me and you needed God. We ought never to stop as long as there's one little boy or girl that needs God. We don't stop until we find them. Amen. Run them things, boy. Soon put them gas in and by the grace of God, we'll send them buses to them little boys. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, we got boogers on the seats. That's better than cobwebs. Amen. Amen. Better than cobwebs. Amen. They said, king, the king said, said uh, we got a message from the king to you, son. Oh, he's over here. He said, well, he said, uh, the king wants you. He said, huh? The king? King David wants me? They said, that's right. The king wants you. I'm going to be specially happy this week because my birthday is Saturday, my spiritual birthday. My real birthday is in November, you know, but my spiritual birthday will be this Saturday. Yes. This Saturday Praise God. is just this kind of weather. It's just this kind of weather. Man, brother, yeah. I'll never forget. Yeah. I was a little Mephibosheth, brother. Yeah. Little brother Danny. No, I wasn't brother Danny then. I was Danny Mephibosheth Castle. <laughs> and I was lame on both of my feet. I couldn't go to him. I couldn't go to him by myself. He had to come where I was. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. And boy, I'll tell you what, I wasn't able to get to him. And I'll tell you, God, God sent an old man through Nebo, North Carolina, by the name of Uncle Joe Parson, who got up and prayed every morning, about four or five o'clock in the morning, and prayed God down on the community. And people was fasting. And a woman up there fasted six days and nights for little lame boys like me, little Mephibosheth like me. And boy, she prayed and she fasted. And I'll never forget the weather was just like this. That first night I went to church, I went up there and peeked in the back door. I, my face was sunburnt. Man, I was red as a pickle beet. And I don't know, a pair of blue jeans. My hair was down about like right here. I flipped out like that right there. I looked like some kind of idiot. And I had a, I had an old pair of blue jeans and a little white short sleeve shirt. And that night I went to that church. I'm glad Brother the King uh, sent after me. I'm glad the King sent after me. I'm glad the King looked down. Oh, the people said no. People said no. There ain't no hope for him. They ain't no use. I guarantee you those Christians thought there wasn't no use in witnessing to me. I guarantee you they thought that. But I'm glad the king didn't give up on me. I'm glad the king I sent an old man of God to town to preach. I'm glad the king I sent somebody my way. And I got under conviction. And brother, I'll never, ever, ever. Let me tell you something here tonight. I've been through some ups and downs, way ups and way downs. And I've been through the battles. I've been through the hard time, but don't you ever doubt it one time, God Almighty done a work in my soul that I've never got over from that man of this. Thank God. Hallelujah. That king come and got me. Hallelujah. I'm glad the king come and got me. And I just went, hallelujah. I'm glad the king come. I'm glad the king comes and got me. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you what, boy. They sung that night. And a group of young people got up and sung. Like he's up here doing a while ago. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. 
I'll never forget what he done for my soul. The king sent the Lord, or the Lord sent the Spirit after my soul. I'm glad he did. What did your stop and shout, amen? If I can get off of this introduction. Amen. The king sent somebody after me. That night he come to me and said, hey, you want to go, Danny? My God, that's good. And I was like, yes, I said, I can't go. I can't go. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I can't come where you are. I can't. I'm a sinner. I can't walk. He said, that's all right. We're going to pick you up. And we're going to take your name and put you on the bus, glory to God. And hallelujah, thank God, the king come and got me. Hey Amen. I'll never forget when he come and got me. He come and got me. And I was standing there that night, and they were saying, I had this, I said, this boy, my, friend, my cousin, this girl, I was standing right beside her, and, and uh, he looked over at me and he said, "What we go get saved?" And I said, "No, it ain't my time to get saved." I didn't know what to say. I was, I was under conviction, but I didn't know how to answer him. And finally, I, I looked around and there's this girl from school in front of me, and she turned around and said, "Danny, won't you go get saved?" And I said, "No." It kind of got me mad because it was embarrassing me. I was under conviction. I didn't know what to say. So he had me hemmed up. I mean, I couldn't get loose. I didn't have nowhere to go. All that stuff my mom taught me when I was little started coming back in my mind, and I began to think about it. I knew there was a God. I knew there was a God in heaven, and I could go live with him. I could have my sins forgiven. I finally looked at him and said, let's go. And I stepped out of the seat. I was sitting about right back there where Sammy is. And while I was on the end, and buddy, I stepped out like that. He come out with me. I'll never forget, I was coming home. And the Kim boys was putting me on the chariot. I fell down on my face. And brother, 45 minutes later, I got up. I went down a sinner. I come up a saint. Amen. I went down lost. I come up saved. I didn't have to wait to get baptized either. I didn't have to wait to join the church neither. I was saved by the grace of God on my way to heaven. And God, I got born again. I'm by the king. Come and got me. Amen. Lord in mercy. So every time it gets this time of year, I start thinking about it. The weather out there reminds me of the way it was without I got saved. Lord, this ain't been a sermon, but I'll tell you what. I went home that night. My blessed mother was in the kitchen. And my mom always, my mom always walks around with a dish rag in her hand just to wipe and stuff in the kitchen. And I know she had prayed for me all my life. And I went in that night and something inside said, tell her what happened. Yeah. Oh, I took, took my girlfriend, took my girlfriend home. Let me tell you this. Now, I had a little OMG, yeah. had a little gear shift by like that microphone right there. That's the way it was. Like, a vroom, 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 vroom. like that changing gears. And you ain't going to believe this. But I took her home that night, took my cousin home. A little OMG, and we packed three or four people in it. And when I took her home, I was getting ready to let her out. And I never believed I'd ever done nothing like this. Before she got out, I said, you want to pray? I've been saved about two hours. I have no idea what made me do that. I had never prayed in front of nobody. Hey, you girls, watch out for these nerds that 17, 18, 19 years old that claim they're saved just so they can get you out on a date. There's something fake about the hype that much. Son, I'm telling you, she, she looked at me like, boy, something else happened to you, ain't it? I said, you want to pray? And I put my head, I put my head down on that little gear shift like that right there. And I don't know what I said, but it felt good. 
I honestly don't. I went home. Mom was sitting in the kitchen. I said, Mom, guess where I've been? She said, where, Danny? I said, the church. Right. She said, well, good, son. I, I'm glad you have. And something inside said, tell her. <laughs> tell her. It was like a voice said, tell her. Yeah. Tell her. I said, Mom, I got saved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when I said I got saved, the floodgate busted loose from my soul. Yeah. That's why the Bible said, confess him before men. Yeah. And Lord, in mercy, I went and got in the bed, yeah. and I laid there in the bed like this. I thought, oh, my goodness. Whoa, this is neat. I'm not going to hell no more. This feels great. I remember thinking, I, I'm not going to hell. I can't get it through my head that I ain't going to hell now. I'd always thought I would. And I thought I'll wreck that little car and I'll go to hell just sure as world. But I said, I'm not going down. This is me. I got up the next morning, I had a motorcycle too. And I got on this motorcycle and I rode it to work down here in Morgan, over at the old Highlander place, off, your own, off of exit 100, right over there about a mile and a half. I went in that day, me and this black boy I worked with, we were sitting down in the parking lot, just sitting there doing nothing like we usually did at work, and the plant manager come by and fired us both. Uh, so I got to say a word. Uh, the next morning, I went home and rode that thing back home. I, I laid down for a little while. I thought, well, might as well. I got fired from a job, and I didn't know what to think about that. And I heard somebody open the door, and my uncle came in, and he said, I just want to hear, let's say, I was glad to hear about Danny. And Mom, I said, oh, Lord, it's all over town. And sure enough, brother, word had spread all over Nebo that I'd got saved by the grace of God. And you know what? Something down inside me was glad. Sometimes that good, good, good. Just go ahead and mess it all up, Lord, so I have to live for you. Amen. Uh, let them think whatever they want to think. And by the grace of God, through all these many, many years, through the hard times, the bad times, and the good times, brother, and, and through the rough days, and when I couldn't pay my bills, or when I had a pocket full of money, when the church was full, or when the church was empty, or when I had something good, or I didn't have something good, when I had something to eat, when I didn't have something to eat, I have feasted at the king's table all these many years. My anchor still holds like it's told about. There's been something on the inside of me ever since that night that will not let me go. And I'm glad to say tonight, thank God, the king sent somebody after me. The king sent somebody after me. Oh, my goodness. I didn't plan on getting off on all that. Woo! Boy, he put my little wheelchair on his chariot and said, look, you don't have to worry about son. We're going to take you yeah. to see the king. Right. I don't have to get there myself. Nope. We're going to take you and put you on the chariot and take you to the king. Amen. Do I have to have any money? No. It's absolutely free. Yeah. The king's paying for every bit of it. Yeah. Buddy, I ain't the smartest person in the world, but I know a deal when I see one. Yeah. And that is a deal. And if you won't take that deal, you're not a very smart businessman, buddy. Thank God the king took him to his house. And I thought about our little bus kids. I'll give you these thoughts tonight. Our little old kids that walk in that door every Sunday morning. The king wants them kids. Amen. Hey, y'all, let's do this. Let's do, I'll just give you these things and we'll go. Will you help me? What if I ask you tonight, hey, will you help me do something? I know most of them say, yeah, Brother Danny, what do you need? Let's all do this. Let's just all as a church buckle down and say, by the grace of God, we're going to get in this thing. I know some of you have to work on Saturday. I understand that. I'm not stupid. But you that have to work on Saturday, have a little extra money, you could put it in and help run the buses, help buy snacks. we got a couple of buses right now that men have to buy their own snacks, buy their own gas. I know bus workers sitting here tonight that go out on Saturday and pull out $10, $20 right out of their pocket, and they're losing money by not working, and buy candy, and, and take kids to get ice cream, stuff like that. You that work, hey, help out on something. I can't give them some extra. Walk up and hand it to them. But will you help me do something? Let's do this. All of our bus workers, let me say, you need to first love your bus kids. Love your bus kids. Ain't nothing going to take the place of just loving them. And they know it if we love them. They know it. You know why they'll listen to me preach hard? Because they know I love them. And I preach hard to them. I ain't going to cut them no slack. We ain't going to tell them something right that ain't right. Yeah. Uh, I killed boys here the other day. Uh, you know, he had long hair. He came up to me and said, you don't like my hair, do you? I said, well, you're the one that started it. Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, 
He said, I didn't think you did. And I said, well, it's your business. I mean, I'm not fussing at you, condemning you. But I said, uh, you know, the Bible said that. But they know if you love them, they'll take it if you love them. Amen? We ought to love these kids. Love them. Love them. Love them. Love them. Amen? If you love them, you'll pray for them. If you love them, you'll give them a little hug once in a while. Like that little girl over there. So now listen, there's no telling what God might do with that little young one right there. She may grow up to be the next Catherine Kuhlman, though. Uh, uh, she may grow up to be uh, uh, some great uh, missionary's wife or soul winner or bus worker herself. You never know what God might do with our love for our bus kids. I challenge every bus worker here tonight to fall in love with every single kid on your route. They need you to love them. They want you to love them. They're starving for somebody to care about them. They eat it up. They eat it up if you just care about them. And then I want to say another thing. Be excited. Be excited. Can you imagine this? Them going down to see Mephibosheth. Now, Mephibosheth, if you want to go to the king's house, all right. But if you don't, it's all right, too. I know you got to get up early in the morning for the chariot to come get you. But if you think you might, no, I don't believe they did that. I believe they said, glory to God, brother. You just ain't going to believe this. Look what we're going to have at the king's house. You get to sit at the king's table. You get to eat bread continually. You get, I mean, there's play stations and, I mean, there's steak and hamburgers and french fries and Lord in mercy. Uh, there's, there's tennis. You ain't going to be playing much tennis. Uh, you know, uh, what does a man in a wheelchair play? Uh, checkers. Uh, there's all kinds of fun games. Uh, ping pong. Uh, some, uh, you're going to have fun. And somehow or another, they made that little boy want to come. You know what our job as bus workers are? Our job is to be so excited. Our job is to be, what if you went to the used car dealership? And the used car dealer come out and said, well now, I got a pretty nice old car here. It ain't much, but if you want it, tell me who's going to buy a car? Son, I'm telling you, he's got the best car in the world here, him tell it. Oh Lord, this little cream puff. I mean, a little old woman drove it downhill both ways, schooled back. And, and they got it out of uh, third gear. And they uh, boy, changed all over 50 miles. And you know, that's got the original tires and all of that. I'll tell you what, they'll make you want it. Our job as bus workers is to make them want to come to the king's house and to hear about the king and worship the king. Our job's to be excited. I challenge every bus worker here tonight, turn that TV off on Friday night, get in the bed early enough to get you a good night's sleep and pray the fire God down on you where you can be excited when you go. Now we've had three bad Sundays. Two Sundays ago it snowed. Last Sunday was time change. This Sunday there's no excuse. No excuse. Pretty weather, 70 degrees. There's only one thing we need, our love and our excitement. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. By the grace of God, this coming Saturday, I'm going to get out there and find some kids and beat the bushes. If somebody will go with me, I'll love to have you. And if you don't, I'm going to go by myself. Amen. And you show me where to go what bus are going out. And I believe some of y'all will feel the same way. Right. I believe some of y'all feel the same. Sometimes you just get kind of aggravated and you say, all right, bless God, this means war, devil. Because the devil's tried to steal some of our bus kids. And the devil's tried to uh, knock some of them out. But it's time for us to say, hey, let's get to chat. Let's go back to the king uh, for the king's work and bring the little boys and girls Amen. to the king's house. I heard about uh, Brother Jim Vineyard. You've heard of him? A great bus worker, great bus leader. I thank God for everyone. I mean, if you ain't got two on the bus, thank God for it. That's shouting ground. But the more the better. Amen? Amen. Sure. Jim Vineyard said one of his bus workers come to him one time and he said, uh, he told him, he said, man, we've got to get, that, get the bus back up. He said, your numbers are low. Let's get it back up. He said, preacher, you can't. He said, I've done, I've been, I tried it, and I just can't get it up. He's running maybe in the low 20s on his route, and Brother Vineyard said, hey, we can do better than that. Let's get that bus up. Let's get that bus up. Let's get them kids on that bus. And, and the fellow said, he said, you can't. A lot of other churches around here is doing bus routes. We're, you know, this, you know, and I, I, a fellow told me that the other day down in, in Kings Mountain. He said, we're running into another church. I said, well, look, there's a lot more out there. And he said, you know what I did? He said, I'll show you we can get that route up. He said, now, now this is hard for you to believe just what the man said. He said, I went out that Saturday morning and picked him up at 6.30. He said, I was at his house at 6.30. We drove to the area. He said, we knocked on our first door at 10 minutes to 7. He said, right, got people out of bed. He said, we knocked on doors right through breakfast.
Jesus didn't stop to get coffee, didn't stop to get a piece of bread. He said we went right on through lunch, didn't go get a hamburger, knocked on doors all day long. He said we didn't stop to eat supper. He said at 11 o'clock at night, we went back to the house. He said we didn't have a promotion. We didn't have a special day. We didn't have nothing big, no ice cream, nothing, pizza, nothing. The Sunday before, he had 20-something on his bus. The next Sunday morning, he said 145 people got on that bus and rode them to church. And he said there is no substitute. There is no substitute. We're just going to tell the little boys and girls, go to Miss Fibichel's house and get him out of there, put him on the bus, and take him to the king's house to see the king. Thank God that's what loved it. Listen, talk is cheap, people. If we say we love, the Bible said, let us not love in word only, but in deed. Amen. If you love me, show me you love me. Yeah, that's right, brother. I'm, I used to believe that people say, I love you, Brother Danny. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe that no more. Man, brother, man. I see it, man. man. Talk's cheap. That's right. Talk's cheap. Yeah. Service. We ought to have some service. We ought to meet their needs. Be good if some people meet them little bus kids at the door. Show them where the restroom is. Ladies, help them find their Sunday school class. Amen. Instead of just saying, Oh my goodness, look at that coming in here. And being critical of it, why don't you take one of them on as a project and set them down and take the Bible and say, you know what, you want to sit with me today? You can ask your bus worker if it's all right for you to sit with me today. Put your arm around them. You know what, we got one little girl, I don't even know her name. She's about that tall. And every Sunday morning when she comes in, some of you might have seen her, uh, she just grabs me like it. She'll grab my leg and just, just hug it like it. Just hug and hold on for dear life. I don't know why she does that, except when she first started coming, I paid her a little bit of attention. She been, they're like dogs. I don't mean to say that bad, but they're like, I don't mean that bad. You know what I mean. I mean that good. You know how you can pet a dog? My dogs out there in the yard, they're starving to death for me just to be nice to them. Most time I'd say, get out of here. Get out. <laughs> and boy, if I if I if I don't what if I just do this, hey there, hey there. Oh Lord, it's on then. They'll jump up on you, start licking your hands. I mean, they're starving for a little bit of attention. And bus kids are the same way. I, I pull out a quarter sometimes. Them you men, just bring your pocket full of quarters. And one of us say, hey buddy, come here a minute. I want to get you got a friend for life. Just giving them a quarter. It means so much to them. I mean, they are precious, buddy. When you really start thinking about it, they're precious. And listen, one of these days, them kids could be singing in the choir, uh, 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 like Goldust singing that song a minute ago, singing more than enough, or they could be in juvenile center somewhere, or maybe on crack, or maybe out there murdering somebody. And it all the difference would make whether me and you made that extra visit and knocked on that door and brought them to the king. He'd have died there and nobody ever heard tell of him. If somebody hadn't went and brought him to the king's house. Well, that's good. Lord. Went and brought him to the king's house. And we're reading about him, preaching about him tonight because of that bus worker that went down there. See, the king just said, go get him. If it had been left at the king, he had never even got there. The servant done the work. Amen. You know what we do now? We say, well, king, won't your spirit draw him in? Uh, and the king says, no, because I told you to go get him. That's it. You get him here to hear the gospel, then the Spirit will draw him to Jesus. That's right, that's right, that's right brother. Amen. Amen. You got this crowd saying, bless God, I don't believe in going out there and knocking on doors. I believe in letting the Holy Ghost drive them, draw them in. They say that because they're too lazy to get out and carry out the great commission that the Lord told them to carry out. Amen. That's right. Amen. Tell them I said so. Amen. Phone number 652-8082. Amen. Amen. We'll get the Bible out and see what it says. Yeah, amen. Service. Amen. And then persistence. We you know what we need in the bus ministry? Persistence. Amen. Just don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Don't think about quitting. If a voice comes to you and says, well, it's about time for you to retire from the bus ministry. That's right. Let some of these younger ones take it. That is not the Lord talking to you. Right. Persistence. God don't call you to quit. God don't call quitters. Right. He don't call you to quit. Nothing. If God puts you in doing something, yeah. he don't want you to quit unless he graduates you on up into something else. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I've been pastoring a long time. Longer than most of you have been alive, I reckon. And you know what? I've seen a lot of people, and every time I see somebody say, I feel led to quit, Bad. their Christian life goes down, right. down, right. down. They never go up. 
He went and got him. Brought him to the king's house. Well, I'm saying this and I'm through tonight. Here's what I want you to do. You can't build a bus route with promotions. No. It's not enough. You're right. It takes prayer. And, and, and me and Jason was talking one day about prayer is probably the most important tool itself with, with our visitation. Just pray that God will put it in their little hearts to want to get up and come to church. There's enough of them out there. And I want to tell you something else. God will give us, listen, if we'll stay after sinners, God will give us what we need. Somebody said, we ought to be saving all this money we're spending on them little brats. Build us a church. Uh-uh. Jesus might be coming back next week. May not have to have, have no new church. If God wants us to have it, oh, I'm, I'm going to stay after sinners. And if he wants us to have it, he'll work it out and take care of it. That's his program. That's his plan. That's his plan. I know churches say, well, we're not going to take on no missionaries. We're not going to run no buses until we can get our... You never will get yourself straightened out. You better do busy and do what God said and not worry about the bill and he'll take care of that. That's my philosophy and I believe it's biblical. Believe it is. And I'm going to tell you tonight, I'm going to challenge everybody here. We ought to have a gang out here Saturday morning and wash a fool out of them buses. You might not want to go on a bus route. It's not for everybody. I don't think that at all. It's not for everybody. But you ought to try it sometime just to get a blessing. That's good. We can divide up Saturday and hit twice the doors sure. in half the time. If a bunch of you just come out, we just split you up and send you out. Anybody here having a real hard time, got a lot of problems? This is what you need to be doing. There's nothing that will help you get over your problems and forget about them like getting out and seeing how some other people have to live. So I guarantee you won't go out there an hour till you'll be thinking, hey, I ain't bad as I thought I was. Amen. Son, I'm telling you what, one of our bus workers years ago, not, not here in our church or not even in this area, went to a house. One of them where you stepped up on the porch you could be coming on, Miss Desi. Stepped up on the porch. And, uh, come on, Brother Jason. And uh, you stepped over a dead cat. Yeah. yeah. Just to get in the house. Stayed there several weeks. So that's sorry, people. It is, but that ain't them kids' fault. We had a family here this morning, four kids. That's just begging us to help them. And I sat right there and talked to the mama. And I said, now listen. You're not living right. You know, we don't just... We don't just throw God's money away and stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, and I didn't, I didn't help them this morning, but my heart broke for them kids. It ain't their fault. It ain't their fault. You can't hold it against them because their parents maybe are sorry. Or, it ain't their fault. You know what a girl told me the other day? She said, all the time growing up, she said, my daddy was messed up in the head. And she said, I used to Push my dresser in front of my bedroom door every night. Scared he was going to come in there and rape me. I had another one tell me, 14 years old. She said, my uncle comes over to house. She's a bus kid, rode the buses. 14 years old in Marion. And she said, my uncle stays, my, my mama works third shift. And she said, mama goes to work. My uncle, my daddy gets drunk. Daddy goes to bed. My uncle comes in my room. And she said, I'm scared to tell anybody. I said, you better get this thing. She finally got out of it and got things straightened out, I think. But you know, a girl like that right there, she's going to be scarred and messed up the rest of her life. It'll prevent her from even enjoying a normal married life because of what she's been through. And I'm telling you, the social workers and services, they can't, they can't do nothing about that. They can, they can maybe rescue some, and I thank God for that. But they'll go right back into the same sin if a church don't reach them. If a church don't reach them. So I tell you, I don't really know how to give an invitation tonight except let's just imagine all the little Mephibosheths out there. And you say, Brother Danny, I can't go visit him, but I tell you what I can do. I can pray and I can give. We need some people that will just say, hey, I'd be willing to make some snacks. How many of our bus workers right now have to make your own snacks for your own bus? Would you raise your hand? Any, our junior does. Anybody else? Jason does. There's two of our buses right there have nobody to make snacks for them. Well, you ladies, it wouldn't take you near as long as it does them to do bus route on Saturday and Sunday. Just say, hey, I'll have you some snacks every Saturday or every Sunday morning. A drink, a cookie or something. Just buy them some cookies. Um, we had one bus this morning. 
We would leave in the parking lot. We was going to do it anyway, but it would be illegal because we still don't have enough bus drivers. Mike had to go to California to get his brother. Brother Dale Franklin had to work. We need at least two or three more to be willing to go get them CDL license. One lady come to me, she said, is it all right for a woman? Sure it is. Amen. A lot of women school bus drivers. We need some people to do that. I mean, it ain't going to kill you. Everybody do their part. We already got the biggest bus ministry in this county. And so let's just go for the glory of God. God will provide the way for us. Let's stand. Let's stand and bow our heads for prayer.